Hey peeps, welcome back to Project in Arms, and in today's video, we're going to attempt to turn a PES file back into an SVG file. So let's get to it. So we've gotten asked the question a couple times about how to turn a PES file back into an editable SVG file. And the answer is, well, you kind of can and you kind of can't. Uh, you're never going to get the best results from converting a PES back into an SVG. And we'll show you a few tips and tricks that we have found along the way using some of the software that we've become uh, newly accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And this is probably just for small edits because if you're going to do bigger edits, might as well just do it yourself. Yeah, if you want to use Inkscape to convert your PES file and make some edits, we're talking about very small, like you just need to change one tiny little stitch or two uh, to get in the right spot. But past that, we're going to have to do some other tricks. So let's get to it. Let's go. Okay, so what we're going to use in ex as an example for this video is our Hey Peeps patch. Now, right now, this is the SVG. And I just want to point out a few things before uh, we go look at the PES version of this patch. But right now, if I go into the Nodes tool on this and select on an area, you're going to see it's made up of little nodes. And an SVG file is uh, Scalable Vector Graphics, or SVG. And it's really like um, little math equations on nodes that kind of are, are scalable to the largest size all the way down to the smallest size uh, because it's based off of a mathematical formula. So you don't lose any detail no matter how large or small you scale it. So you can see these little nodes are where those little calculations are made to make the shape that you want. So you're not talking about a lot of little areas to make this shape. So that, that's the first thing that I want to point out here. So if we go ahead and open up the PES file, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's see. New. Open my PES file version. So you can see it's my heypeeps.pes. So you're going to notice some big differences. First of all, you're going to see a bunch of little lines, which is the thread lines that we have. Um, how we have the commands that we had input on our SVG file. And you're going to see that this is not a solid shape, right? If I zoom in here, you're going to see that these are all of my stitch lines because a PES file, unlike an SVG file, is not a scalable file. What it is, is it's made up of each individual stitch point. So if I go back into the nodes tool here and I click on an area, you're going to see it is made up of all of these individual nodes and your embroidery machines reads these little nodes as points where it needs to make a stitch. So that's how this is made up. So there's no real way to make large edits on this. Like I couldn't change the shape of this little peep head right here easily. Now it is possible if I really, really wanted to, and I wanted to spend hours on doing this, I could move each individual node to change uh, the shape. But the things that you really are gonna make your money on when editing PES files in Inkscape is things like this, where we didn't convert this into a satin, uh, we left it as a stroke. So you can see that it doesn't quite reach this corner here. So if I select on this area here, I could make some small edits here. I'm going to go ahead and turn my node snapping tool off. I could make some small edits, you know, in a very short amount of time, just to kind of cover these areas. And you can see like, I'm literally just moving each stitch point to kind of cover that area. And I would say this is probably the max amount of edits that you would want to make or in a PES file using Inkscape because it's so tedious, right? That's a lot of points to move around. And you can see I'm already kind of making a little spiderweb nest here, which may not turn out so well. Uh, so 
I would say, yes, you can technically edit a PES file in Inkscape. So what I think we'll be able to actually do is add things to this design because maybe editing it and dragging each node out is a little bit tedious, but trying to add things, maybe that would work because we can re-export it. And... Yeah, so that's one thing that you can do here. You can't easily modify the current design on there, but you can easily add things to this design. So if I wanted to add text on the little peep itself, we can do that by going to the lettering tool. So if we just go here, uh, lettering, and if I wanted to add text to this peep, I'm just gonna type in text and hit apply and quit. Now, if I move this text down on the peep here, you can see now I have kind of a, a design that's made up of all of the PES stuff, but I also have the SVG piece of it. Well, we can resave this as a PES and it's gonna have this, and we can prove that by going uh, to our simulator. What I do wanna point out is we highlight everything here and we try to go to the params. I'm gonna show you that it's not going to work in show you here. If you do each piece though, like if you did like the peep itself, it would work in this params case. But when you do it with the um, lettering, it doesn't work. And that goes with a lot of things in Inkscape. Like if you had this without being a PS previous, it would still probably not work. Yeah, whenever you put the lettering on top of anything else, it seems, at least for us, to have this error on here. But what we have found out is if you go into the realistic preview, mm -hmm. um, it will work appropriately and it will stitch out just fine. So we'll go ahead and show you in the simulator what this would look like. And we used to use params as a check, but as we've been doing embroidery more, we've learned that Really, simulator could be used as checking to make sure your embroidery works because like we said previously, lettering on top of an image just doesn't work, but it will work embroidering. Yep. So you can see here the results um, where we moved some of those stitches up here have moved and our new text is there. So all we really have to do now is save this as a PES and it would stitch out just like this now. But uh, unless you're adding things to a purchased PES design or a PES design that you've gotten from someone else, changing other things in this is very, very difficult. So what we're gonna do as another method of doing this, now we recently got a Silhouette machine and we have learned on our business edition of the Silhouette Studio, which um, is a purchase, you can't do it from the basic edition, but on the business edition, you can import PES files. And what we found with the Silhouette Studio software is that tracing is way easier than tracing on Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. What that allows you to do in the business edition is to go ahead and open a PES file. So here's our heypeeps.pes. Open. And you can see here it is. I'm just gonna move it over here so we can see it. Now this file right here, a PES file, is not going to trace in Inkscape just because it's not a real shape. It's just a bunch of points. Um, but on here, we can get uh, some better results when tracing. So let's go ahead and go to our little tracing tool here. So tracing area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this out by color so that uh, we can keep track of each of the shapes. And I'm just going to turn this threshold to right where I want it there. And I'll trace that. And you can see now we have a trace. Now I'm going to point out that this is why converting a PES into an SVG file is not really worth your time because as I zoom in here, you're going to see that there are some major issues with this. So you can see it's very like not smooth and you would actually physically have to go in and, 
update each of these nodes to make it correct. And we're even using a more simple design. So if you're trying to do this with like a very complicated design, you may even run into more issues. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna zoom back out here. See, especially right here, there's some major issues and you would actually have to physically move all of these things. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this just to show you proof of concept that we can now save this and export it as an SVG, go back into Inkscape, and then convert it back into a PES that we want. So we're kind of just like going from software to software to just try to manipulate this as much as possible just to get even something working. Right. So the first thing I want to do is, like I said, we're, we're tracing by shape, but if we left everything there, just because of the, how this tracing works, um, it's going to trace everything. So I'm just going to get rid of colors uh, once I'm done with them. So I'm just move off to the side. So the next thing I'm going to trace again. So we're not super expertise in this Silhouette Studio Business Edition software. We've only just started recently using it, so there might even be more workarounds that we don't know. So if you know any, feel free to comment down below. Absolutely. And there's one issue that popped up when we imported it, and that's this little cutout right here. I don't know why that showed up right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that one just to show that you can make edits to this. So I'm going to move some nodes around just very tedious edits. <laughs> very tedious. Could you simplify it to make it easier to move it? So you can. And I wanted to point out that you, you absolutely can simplify this, but you're going to lose some details along the way. So we have some text here that as we simplify, the text is going to kind of like melt away. So in order to simplify, if you just go to Object Simplify when you select it on your, your object. Could you deselect the text? You're going to, well, it's grouped. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose you could ungroup this and leave the text as it is. Um, but even simplifying, it, you're not going to get perfect results. Like mm -hmm. It's still going to try to pick up a lot of the things that, because again, it was tracing stitching. It's, it's up to you if you think this is worth your time, but that's kind of what you're trading off here um, versus, I don't know, I would say perhaps starting from scratch and re, like physically tracing out um, a PES file back into an SVG would probably be more worth your time to get better results, but this is a method. So you can go and start moving nodes around to get a closer shape. It's just depending on how much time you want to spend with it. But for now, let's just keep um, tracing this thing out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start filling things with color so that we can keep track of stuff. To add color to a tracing you did in Silhouette, what you do is you can click the little palette and then you have to select your tracing shape and then you can just click on what color you want. So now we have this that we can use. This is now kind of useless and we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. I'm gonna take this, put it back in the center, and this we can export. So we go to file, format, we can change to SVG. Uh-oh, 
looks like we forgot to turn that yellow. I, yeah. Or white. I think what I did is I hit the no, no fill mm -hmm. button, but that's okay. Uh, but this is now an SVG file, so you can actually like move it, move it around, and uh, to to show it's an actual SVG file, we can actually turn go to the nodes. So you'll notice when you click your design, um, it doesn't show nodes, but you can um, go to path, object to path, and then it will show your nodes, so then you can truly edit it. So now it proves that this is truly an editable SVG, and then you can just move things around, make things bigger, make things smaller, whatever the reason you did all this for. Right. Now, again, we don't suggest that you go through all of this trouble unless this is really a design that you don't mind spending a lot of work converting back and forth. But again, perhaps your time is worth it to us. Um, there's a lot of work that we would have to do to this SVG to make it actually usable to be re-embroidered. But if you wanted to do this, you, you can spend the time and do it, but that's how you do it. Maybe you just want to change the way things stitch out or anything like that. The last thing I really want to do is I made this, oops, this outline is below where it should be. So we can move that to front. There you go. So we finished editing our PS. Would I suggest doing this? No, but does it work? I mean, yeah. Yeah, so the question was, can you edit a imported PES uh, because that's all you have to work from and edit that file in Inkscape? The answer is yes and no, right? So yes, if you wanted to manipulate individual sewing nodes to fill in a particular area, you can do that. You absolutely can. It just depends on how much time you want to spend doing that. Um, we also showed a trick in using another software, which is our Silhouette Studio software, Business Edition um, in particular, to be able to import that PES file, trace it, and then use that tracing to export into an SVG file to bring back into Inkscape to make any additional edits you want to make. It's on. a process. It is a process. What we did find out, though, is you can add to an existing uh, PES file. Like if you wanted to add text or additional shapes to the PES file, you can do that and then re-export that out as an updated PES that you can then sew on your machine. So if you got like a design from a company and then you brought it in and then you could add someone's name or something to just customize it a bit, not really fully edit your design. Yeah. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.